like. Hello guys, this is Ana Rojas and Allustrators. Hey everybody. Hi, and we're starting the series of our webinars for BA and PM professionals. And we're starting with the first webinar on Kanban. Uh, but before we start our webinar, I want to make sure I go through some rules uh, of the webinar. First of all, I want to let you know that we are going to have some delay. And basically because we're using Google Hangouts, it's going to be 30 seconds to 45 seconds delay. Um, and just to make sure that you can hear us, please uh, locate the chat box that should be to the right of the video screen. And please put plus sign just to let us know that you can hear as well. Um, and I know it's going to take some time for you to do that and for us to see it. So I'm going to move to another rule. You can ask your questions also as we go. And Joey will answer the questions. Um, sometimes he also uh, answer it as it comes. And he will, also, he will also answer it at the end of the webinar. So um, don't worry. All your questions will get answered. Um, and also, we want to remind you that we're going to have a next meetup as a happy hour next week on Tuesday. So if you didn't join yet, so go ahead and reserve so we'll know how many people are going to come. Yeah, and it's right It's right in Merrifield. So for those of you who are traveling from D.C. or even Maryland, it's pretty much right off of uh, 495 and 66. So, you know, you can easily jump off the Beltway and meet us in Merrifield. And it's six, it's 6 to 8 o'clock, right? Yes, it's six at uh, six to eight, and also follow our calendar so you can see any upcoming events and webinars. And as I say, uh, we are very um, interested in your feedback. So if you have any feedback for this webinar, and if you have any particular topics of interest that you want us to cover or to, in the next net webinars and meetups, please share that also on our meetup page. Uh, we, we will have all the links below in the comments when this video is going to go to YouTube. So you can go there and just share your comments uh, about the topics of interest or anything you have to say about this particular webinar. All right, great. Well, I think, um, is there anything else you would like to add? That's pretty much sure. yeah, I, I wanted to share so we can okay, great. move. So I do see we have a few uh, a few, few participants. So as, as Anna mentioned, you guys are welcome to post your questions as we go. So if uh, Joe can always see your question. Joe, can you see the chat on the right? Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay, great. So Joe will be able to answer the questions or if you have some, if you want to save some of the questions uh, for the end of the webinar, that's also perfectly fine. Uh, he will be happy to answer. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, today we have Joey Spooner. He is uh, accredited uh, Kanban trainer and uh, Kanban coach and professional. Um, I would like to welcome Joey. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Allah. Uh, this was great. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining this uh, webinar. I'm going to teach you uh, or share with you really a few things about Kanban and how we use it in project management, how it actually applies to traditional project management. So I'm going to get started here and hopefully you guys can see this. Yep, we can see. We can okay. see. And do you see the full screen view of it? I believe you do. Yep. Oh, pretty much. Okay, great. So um, I've got about 15 years of management experience, including uh, technology and business management. I've worked in product design and development. I've also done service design and management. Uh, like uh, Ala mentioned, I'm also a Kanban trainer and coach uh, accredited by the Lean Kanban University, and I'm also a certified Scrum Master. Uh, and if you guys want to reach out to me, there's my contact information. I'm happy to take your calls. Uh, really, seriously, call me if you have a problem with Kanban or if you're trying to figure out how to use it, including using it with Scrum. Uh, I do that regularly. So uh, just so you guys know, uh, in the next uh, month, I'll be providing some training here in DC. It's on Kanban system design. So if you've ever drawn a little Kanban board together on your whiteboard or maybe in a, a JIRA system, I take you to the next step beyond that and really how to understand how to build a Kanban service delivery system. And that's really getting into more of the nuts and bolts of actually how to use Kanban to get a lot of feedback from your organization uh, service or design there. So if you guys are interested, you're welcome to uh, go to the website address up there. It's training.tritechenterprise.com and check it out. It's again, it's Kanban system design. And if you email me and let me know, uh, maybe I can give you a small discount too. So let's get into what Kanban is. Some of you uh, may have heard of it. Some of you may have not. Um, in most cases, uh, people look at it as just something that you use for project management. And it really isn't a project management methodology. Uh, a lot of people think it might be that. Uh, some people think it's a framework, like you have to follow it a certain way. 
And in reality, you don't. It's actually not prescriptive at all. Um, it's not. It's used for all types of work, from the front line to the C-suite. You've also see, we also see it used in operations, uh, projects, help desks, building innovative products, and getting them to the market. Uh, we've also seen it used in also uh, traditional PMP approaches, uh, things like deliverables and PGM act, uh, PGMP activities, such as portfolio management. And that's something we call portfolio Kanban in our world. So this is not uh, a prescriptive approach. It's not a framework. It's actually what's referred to as a management method. And that's why it's called the Kanban method. So some people say Kanban, which is just the board. The method really is a lot more. So here are some practices that we commonly use in the Kanban method. I, I wish I could poll people right now. I can't. But uh, if I were to poll them, I would ask how many of you uh, visualize. And I'm pretty sure a good number of you would say we have some kind of visualization in our environment right now for how we do our work. Maybe it's a digital system. Maybe it's just a whiteboard. Who knows? But either way, you're going to visualize first with the Kanban method. You want to see that intangible work show up on a physical board or a virtual board somewhere. Uh, the next step, which is kind of hard to do, is limiting how much you put in progress. Uh, a lot of organizations want to have a lot in progress. They want to be able to get a lot done. The problem is if you don't limit it, you don't get much done. Uh, and that includes making sure work moves smoothly through your system. So something we tend to work with is helping coaches and helping um, people of various roles make sure that work is moving along without getting delayed too much. That happens a lot in environments where they do software development, uh, you name it, software development, project management actually, um, oops, sorry, uh, project management, and also uh, for things like uh, human resource systems and finance and management, finance and operational systems. So these things happen from time to time where organizations try to pile on too much and don't get much done. And the idea here is we wanna make sure it runs smoothly. Now, we also do things like uh, making some simple and explicit policies obvious. So a lot of times people will refer to, to Scrum having a definition of done, which is a very good policy to begin with. We tend to look all the way back through the whole way of working and we discuss how do you get more policies in place to build the right thing and know if it's not being built. Uh, getting better at building good quality um, work products is really important for us in the Kanban method. Um, also establishing some feedback loops. So, so some of you you guys may already have some feedback loops, maybe using retrospectives. You may have weekly meetings, monthly meetings. The Kanban method doesn't have anything prescriptive that it says you need to do in the feedback loops, but it does offer something called Kanban cadences. And there are about nine of those, I want to say. Yeah, I think nine, if I'm counting correctly. Actually, eight. Uh, so there are about eight cadences that happen. I'm counting one more time. Four, five, six, seven seven cadences that we go through. And those seven cadences help at the organizational level to plan out projects and manage projects, but also at the unit level or team level to really manage those uh, projects and get them done. Uh, and then lastly, we experiment. So um, typically this can be something as simple as what's called kata, which is a very simple improvement loop, or there can be something much more formal like a scientific experiment. It depends on what your organization can do and how much you can tolerate as a team. So there are some principles that we use within the Kanban method. Um, I don't know if many of you guys know about these things, actually. They're really simple but very powerful things. Uh, we start with what you do now. We don't try to change anything. So unlike some frameworks you might see out there, uh, we say start with where you are today. I don't, I don't need to change anything. You don't need to change anything. We just need to understand how things are taking place right now and really building a picture of what that looks like. Now, the second step is really important there. We want to gain agreement to pursue improvement through evolutionary change. That's kind of hard for some organizations to agree to change, especially teams. But as they start to do some of this Kanban method work, and they go through some of those cadences or some of those feedback loops, they start to see some benefits. They start to see how they can make better decisions, a little more timely decisions, too. So next up is encouraging acts of leadership at all levels. This is probably what I refer to as the gasoline on the Kanban method. It really lights it on fire and gets it moving for everybody. I had the good fortune of working with a uh, manager from the Department of Labor for about two years, and he and I worked together on a daily basis using the Kanban method to really improve the way the teams worked within this uh, little division inside the department. And if it wasn't for his leadership and attention and focus, we would not have seen the progress that we had made. Uh, in this case, we were able to reduce our um, time to deliver software from about 55 days to about 11 days. So can you imagine that? Using a simple method, starting with where you are now, slowly improving bit by bit, 
and it feels slow to you psychologically, but what comes out of it is an actual major reduction in time to provide things and deliver things. And in this case, uh, it's worked really well for the Department of Labor. And it, with leadership, that's a key thing. It keeps the focus on the issues and helping people to resolve those issues. Everyone, including me, enjoys kind of avoiding things at times, and this helps you to stay focused on that. So next up here, we've got project management and Kanban. So why, why would you want to use Kanban in project management activities, especially phase gate project management? Uh, some people might say, well, let's just get rid of project management altogether. Kanban's the best thing in the world. Let's just use that. Uh, my experience has been that a lot of people will not give up what works for them. And in fact, as you saw in that earlier principle, it really is about starting with where you are. So if you're doing PMP today, don't change it. I mean, it's obviously working for you in some way. And where it isn't, that's where the Kanban method will probably provide you some insight and some evidence to make some changes. So in this case, what we look for are things like predictability. So we try to do uh, things like our, we don't do hours-based estimation and planning. But if, they're, if your team is challenged with that, we can help you understand how to predict without being so granular in that detail. Uh, there's also things like constantly updating a project plan. Um, that happens frequently. In our case, we tend to write one project plan, and I'll show you in a second what this looks like. We tend to write one project plan and then work with that, but not under such strict guidelines that you might find in traditional project schedules. Um, if your team's under pressure to deliver on a firmer tight schedule, the Kanban method really does help you to understand if that's realistic and what needs to be sacrificed in terms of scope way early on. Uh, there's also continuously addressing operational risks. We do that daily within the Kanban method. Uh, in particular, we look for things that are dependency related in nature or possibly risk related in terms of what we're, we're delivering. So there are ways to really pull it out with the Kanban method and know what you're carrying as far as a risk inside a project. Uh, any unforeseen issues or opportunities, we're really good with that in the Kanban method. I'd have to say that's where it's shined really well. So for example, you'll find things like, um, you'll be working on a committed effort. And this happened at the Department of Labor, for example. We were working on a committed effort to deliver some software for a, a unit inside the department, and then the White House called. And they said, we need to get this thing done. And obviously, you tend to focus on those kinds of requests as being important. So what we decided to do was make sure that we had certain levels of our team's capacity allocated for those ad hoc or unforeseen issues. We still were able to commit to certain amount, a certain amount of work within our given uh, project portfolio, but we didn't miss out on those ad hoc unforeseen issues. In fact, we got to the point where we could almost predict those things and when they would arrive. That's how useful this method was for us. Uh, also, we did dependency management. So in this case, looking at dependency between projects and impacts and changes to projects, it's really clear how that works in the Kanban method. Uh, we use things like blockers and also things like um, uh, defects to really tell us where we are with risk. And in particular, blockers are those things that are dependency mappers for us. So if you're having problems with your project and it's feeling stressed in a phase gate nature with dependencies, this lights up like a uh, a city at night when you're flying into a city. It really does show you the geographic area of where your dependencies are in your projects and in your organization. And then lastly, with budget discussions, I find it really useful. It, it helps you to understand how to model the business and budget activities around your project. And you can really do a good bit of forecasting that's reliable on what it looks like to run your project. Now, some of the benefits that we have found when we use Kanban for traditional project management is what I was getting at a little earlier. You kind of get into this discussion of, hey, look, establish service level expectations with customers and suppliers and other projects. You start to be able to set this sort of delivery expectation with your customers. You can tell them it's going to take us about this much time to get something to you. So rather than following a traditional um, fixed date delivery of all the items in a critical path, you tend to know what it's going to take to get those things done after a certain period of time. It becomes more obvious. Uh, there's also a support for two-way commitment, which means uh, there's an agreement between the customers and workers. The workers, when they'll actually have it done, the customer, when they'll take responsibility for that. It's a really good uh, fixed date delivery kind of model there, which follows the same kind of pattern you find in traditional project management. We also have tools that visualize uh, risk. Um, that really is the useful thing. So typically within a Kanban board, part of this system design class that I was mentioning earlier, we really get into how to expose those risks and issues really early on. So you can identify problems with your project, resolve them early on, and keep it running smoothly. Uh, we also have a way to submit uh, working agreements, those policies that you saw earlier. 
those policies really uh, support two different things. They support a clear understanding of how the actual project is supposed to work, how the work is supposed to be delivered. And this could be anything from PMP documents to actual software code. Uh, it just varies, right? So we want to make sure that everyone has a clear visualization of those policies. And then also making changes is really easy. Um, if you're using a physical Kanban board, uh, it takes all of five minutes or less to change the way you operate something for the entire team. That's how easy it is, and it's not that hard to manage over the long run. Um, there's also an opportunity to focus on the service instead of the team. So I can imagine if I asked you guys to answer this question, uh, which is how many of you are actually doing uh, our utilization estimates or resource utilization estimates. Those kinds of things typically drive a whole team's focus and you tend to miss out on the details of what really is important. So what we tend to focus on within the Kanban method is, in, is you get this opportunity to talk about how you're delivering work. Can you deliver the work? Can you support that delivery of the work? So it really is about outcomes instead of only the deliverables themselves. So can you actually make that happen as far as the valuable work that the project's meant to deliver. So here, here's a simple approach, actually two different approaches here. Uh, you can visualize your PMP work and break it down into small tasks. That's what that little board is on the right there. Most of those things are actually PMP related tasks, uh, things like a monthly project report. Um, another one in there is probably the actual PMP itself, like version one of the PMP. So we track that change through the system and it keeps it very auditable, but also at the same time, very clear for everyone and transparent, excuse me, about what is happening in the project. Now, we also have a way to visualize the WPS uh, and break it down into small tasks and stories. So um, right here, is an example of a very horrific looking uh, WBS. It's very detail oriented, right? Uh, and this is a, a deployment of, I wanna say, four different services within a business uh, that wanna use Kanban. And this is the, uh, again, part of the system design course, we work on different activities to build out those services. Well, in this case, that is a, a good bit of work breakdown activity that will flow into activities and tasks that get tracked, again, over here in this board on the right or on the board on the left. There isn't a right or wrong way to do this. The key is to visualize it. Uh, this most simplistic way to do it is that to do doing done kind of approach. I've seen things even more simple than that, but those are the basic what are called proto Kanban approaches to doing work. Now here you see on the left and on the right, a few more columns and probably a few more policies that are being put together. That really is more of what we call a service delivery Kanban. Um, and it's very exciting work. Oops, sorry about that. So what we have here next is just a simple, basic project charter. Uh, I'm assuming probably a good number of you guys have actually done uh, project charters before from your big projects for your small projects. This is no different for us in our world. So I want you guys to understand we do Kanban within our corporation. We run that as our day-to-day -day activities. But part of our management activities right now are to do PMP. So you're not alone. If you're doing this uh, as a group or doing this as an individual and you're thinking PMP is is so boring or so outdated, uh, don't feel too bad. It actually is something that we still use and we find it useful, especially for those people who still think it's useful. I, I would agree, it has purpose here. So uh, again, there's the work breakdown schedule that we had um, put together and it formed out into this kind of um, Kanban system right here. You guys may not see this too well, but you have things like options in the first column, uh, selected for development in the next column, analysis, execute, review and QA ready to deploy, deploy and done. And those are the various activities that are going on to build out a Kanban system. So it's kind of funny, you can use Kanban to build Kanban. Uh, that's what I've done before. Uh, but in this case, this could very easily be your own work breakdown activities for project management or work breakdown activities for the project itself. Any of those things are possible and very doable within a Kanban system. So one of the things you'll also see there is this little arrow pointing up uh, at the execute column right here. And what that's showing you is a block. So remember how I talked about risks before? This is actually a risk right here. This is one where we have waiting for a CEO to give us a review on something. While we're executing it, we need his review on a detail. Uh, and that's a consultation with executive management. So he is executive management in this case. We needed his review. He was busy. A lot of CEOs are busy people, right? So in this case, what we decided to do was block it because he wasn't responding after a day or two. Uh, about a week into it, he said, why is that still blocked? We looked at him and said, well, that's something you need to answer for us because we're waiting for you. Uh, we've been trying to get in touch with you. So he realized that he was part of the problem, but also part of the solution. 
something we teach you in the Kanban method is how to um, look at these things and start to understand the patterns around them and how to adapt to those patterns so you have more predictability with your projects going forward. Um, that's just a good example there. So another one here for product development. Uh, one product we're looking at doing is uh, something called free flow. And the idea here is it's just like your typical product development activity with a project management plan. I mean, we're traditional people here, nothing fancy, nothing lean startup like. This is a you know traditional PMP type approach to doing work. But again, here we go with the work showing up in a product development Kanban system. Now, a bit more simple. We have a backlog of things to do. We select one, we have a couple that we can put in progress and a couple that we can review before we're done. And again, you'll notice there in the left side of the screen, you see monthly project report. Right below that, you see another monthly project report. There's no hidden mystery here. Part of the project's design is to have monthly project reports. So those things get pulled into process and actually executed. In this case, it's such a small team, they decided to mix both the project management work and the software development work at this time. I have a funny feeling they'll eventually break out and have one project management uh, delivery Kanban system just for the project management overhead, and they'll have a different one for just software development. But right now, that's okay. If you're just starting out, it's okay to mix those types of work. There's no wrong, wrong way to do Kanban. So I want you guys to feel good about experimenting and trying things out. There's nothing that is ever really wrong there. So this is kind of what I had to show you guys for today. Um, it's not hard to get into this and do this kind of work. I didn't want to make it too long because I figured people might have questions and you're more than welcome to ask me questions. And as I see them pop up in the q and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, again, feel free to ask me for help. I'm, I don't want to feel like I'm unapproachable by any means. I'm happy to talk with you guys. Uh, you can email me, you can call me, and I'll be happy to, to give you my thoughts and feedback on things that you're trying to do with the Kanban method. So just remember, it's a management method. It's used for phase gate projects. It's not hard to get started using these practices. Uh, visualization is a very good place to start. Uh, in, in fact, some teams spend quite a bit of time there just getting their visualizations to where they feel good about them. Uh, and you can learn more uh, with the training I'll be offering in April. And also, again, feel free if you want me to bring this kind of conversation, this kind of topic to your uh, company, and you want me to talk about it um, uh, behind closed doors with your executives or with your managers or with your peers, I'm more than happy to come by and give you guys like a lunchtime talk or a coffee talk or whatever you think is right for you. All right, so with that, that is what I have right now for the, the, the actual presentation portion of this. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say uh, from the Q&A side of the fence. Okay, okay. Is Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the presentation. You know, great information. We actually just recently started using Kanban, well, not as much of a Kanban, but a Scrum method in at Navy Federal, and we're using Kanban board. A lot of what you just showed, you know, including the Kanban boards, tickets, risks, is, you know, something that I see definitely coming in, and I'm sure it's not just Navy Federal. I'm sure other companies are switching to Kanban and board. So it's, it's really great information, really helpful. I did have a quick question for you. Um, you did say that, uh, you know, at the minimum, you suggest to have a project management and development boards. Yes. Are there any additional boards you uh, you see in, you know, in, in real life and you suggest to have? Yeah, so there's there's one other one that, that made, um, come up occasionally. There's the, the PMP or project management type activities that you do. There's the, the software delivery team, like a feature delivery team. And then sometimes what you find in the middle of that is the portfolio Kanban, which is more of the portfolio of projects that you're trying to track and manage. So that may pop up from time to time as well. In fact, with the uh, Department of Labor, we started off with just a typical proto Kanban that modeled our Scrum process. We really like doing Scrum, but after so many times of doing it, we felt like we wanted to change it up. Plus, um, you know, these executive orders would kind of blow up our plans with our Scrum sprints. So we said, okay, let's find a way to mix those things together. That's why we came out with using like a proto Kanban, which supported that Scrum activity underneath it. But then we had a little bit of capacity set aside for these expedites. That got really useful over time. People like that. And in fact, the, the manager of that team said, you know what, I'm, I'm tired of being hounded by my, no, he didn't say that. He just basically said, I want to be able to visualize uh, to my managers how, how the projects are going at a higher level. They need to see a higher level view of the projects that are in process because they forget, right? They forget how much they've asked for unless there's a piece mm -hmm. of paper or something that they're regularly looking at. When you take a six by four piece of wall or a whiteboard and you start to track those visual items on that board, that takes up enough space visually with the mind that people go, oh, right, those are the things that we're dealing with. 
and they started to represent the larger portfolio of projects they were managing. And there are more advanced things we can do within that. So, uh, for example, uh, if you take some of the training, more advanced training that I offer, we dive into more of the details around how do you look at each project and know that you've got the right balance, uh, that you've got some low-risk projects and maybe one or two high-risk projects that you want to take on, need to take on, but you don't want to overwhelm yourself with too many risks, basically. Right. I do have a question too. So let's say if a company have a, a very strong, a large like product development department and uh, R and D department, is that something that also can be, that can 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 be used for that? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a great question. And yes, it can. Um, typically, Kanban will show up in a lot of different places, including lean startups. So you'll find it in product development where they're trying to figure out if they're building the right thing. Um, it's very useful to visualize some of the, the R&D activities that you go through. And one of the challenges I think that R&D firms run into from time to time is knowing when there's enough time, where you've done enough to actually say, we've gone as far as we need to go, let's pull back and review. So a lot of times uh, organizations and even new teams starting out with Kanban will try and set a scope that's too large of, in terms of work. So one of the things they learn is that if you follow the cadences, you start to get some feedback or, or a lack of feedback over weeks and weeks and weeks. So what we've learned is that that starts to give them feedback to say, wait a minute, we look like we're doing nothing. We know we're doing something. We need to break that work down into smaller pieces to figure out what's really working. That kind of creates a two-part effect. One is the team starts to understand this performance a little bit better in terms of an R&D and activities. But on the flip side, they're getting feedback a little sooner. So they start to realize, how can I deliver a little faster to my customers so we can get more feedback in a timely way? That's one of the things that I think is surprising about Kanban. It's sneaky like that, right? There's no fool that says you do this and you get this out of it. It starts to evolve from the team's discipline and their way of working. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Right. Very interesting. Very good. Thank you so much, Joey. Um, yeah. I think we have we're running about a 30, 30 seconds delay, but I see we do have some viewers. So if anybody has any questions, please go ahead and post your questions in the chat box on the right side of the screen. So let's maybe give everybody another minute to see if they have any more questions. And if not, um, the uh, uh, the presentation, link to the presentation to this video will be available in the meetup group. So for those of you who joined a little bit late, you'll still be able to see the uh, the presentation by Joey, Joey today. And um, hopefully we'll see Joey again um, in the next few months. Right? Okay. All right. Yeah, let's just give it a minute. Yeah, I was... I'm trying to check the uh, the event to see if anyone's commented so far. Yeah. Okay. So far, that's it. Okay. So I think that might be it. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, Joey. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank Thanks. you. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Good night.